Hi, this presentation is part of a wider Copernicus user uptake strategy of the European Commission. One of the aims of the strategy is to stimulate the development and use of innovative downstream applications that incorporate Copernicus data and services. My name is Bruce McCormack. I'm here representing Eurogi, the European Umbrella Organization for Geographic Information. Our overall aim is to promote the widespread and effective use of geographic information. Eurogi was asked to identify a number of use cases of Copernicus, which may be of interest to practitioners in the GI community. As part of this user uptake initiative, we provide five case studies relating to wildfire mapping, land cover mapping, the spreading of fertilizer on farm fields, the identification of chlorophyll and turbidity in near coast waters, and this one, which focuses on identifying urban housing densities. The GIS community is without doubt one of the communities which can benefit greatly from the wider uptake of the full, free and open data which Copernicus provides. In this model, I will show you how rep researchers at CERSGIS, the Centre for Remote Sensing and GIS, based at the University of Ghana in Accra, have used Sentinel-2 data to undertake urban density mapping in the Accra area. The rapid population growth in urban areas gives rise to enormous planning and development challenges. This is very much the case in Africa, where not only is the continent's population expected to double from about 1.3 billion, as it is now, to about 2.5 to 2.6 billion in 2050. Not only is that the overall population growing rapidly, but urbanization is taking place at an ever-increasing rate. Regular mapping of urban areas is thus of vital importance. To ensure well-being, the productivity of inhabitants, there is the need for there to be adequate infrastructure and services, such as clinics, schools, water supply, roads, electricity, broadband, sanitation facilities, and other, feature, other services. Regular updates regarding where new urban settlement is taking place and the density of that settlement is, it plays a vital role in services planning. It is therefore imperative to understand and monitor changes in urban density over time to help policymakers make informed decisions regarding resource allocations. The density of urban development has very significant impl implications for the upfront capital cost and ongoing operational costs associated with the provision of urban infrastructure. Urban density also has very important implications for the provision of public transport services and the use of walking and cycling as means of commuting with consequences for greenhouse gas emissions. The overall process that we're going to describe, which follows, has four main steps. Firstly, download Level 1C Sentinel-2 MSI from the Sentinel Scientific Data Hub. You can see the link on the slide. Two, data preparation, which would include stacking 10 meter bands, i.e. bands 2, 3, 4 and 8, and image subsetting clipping and band combination. Three, unsupervised image classification, which in this case is based on the ISO data algorithm. Reclassifying slash recording spectral classes into five information classes, namely high, medium and low density, vegetation and water. Of course, having the necessary hardware and software is a crucial necessity. Hardware used in this case is firstly i7 laptop with 2.4 gigahertz of speed, one terabyte of storage space and 12 gigabytes of RAM. Regarding software, ESRI, ESRI, ESRI's ArcGIS was the platform which was used. Regarding data, Level 1C 
Sentinel-2 satellite imagery obtained from the scientific data hub in JP2 format was used. The project area extent in ESRI shapefile format was also used. Technical issues and resolutions. Undertaking an exercise such as the one which I will describe shortly does not come without certain difficulties. Some examples are set out in the slide. Limited internet bandwidth for downloading images. This can be quite a significant problem in a developing country. The relatively large amount of storage space required to store, process and process imagery for regional level analysis. Next, difficulty in interpreting the image metadata which is made available. And then cloud cover over areas with high levels of per precipitation. Cloud masks are sometimes unable to identify some cloud areas. Thankfully, these difficulties are not insurmountable. There is an outline service which enables one to define and download only an extent of the full imagery rather than the entire scene, thus reducing storage space substantially. The ability to download specific bands from the Sentinel uh, Scientific Data Hub is also very useful. Again, this represents an important means of limiting storage space requirements. The provision of guidelines to interpreting image metadata is also available. We are about to see a demonstration which sets out the process from data download to the classification of urban densities in the Accra area into low, medium and high densities, which I referred to earlier. This video shows how to download and process Sentinel-2 imagery so as to identify different levels of urban density. Density in this context refers to residential density and not population density, so the researchers were looking at the number of dwellings, units, in a given area. The more dwellings in a given area, obviously, the higher the urban density involved. The project area is in the southern part of Ghana, more specifically the Ghanaian capital of Accra. We will begin by downloading Sentinel-2 imagery from google.com. We search for the Sentinel Data Hub. Google is one of the a number of sources of Sentinel imagery, others being Amazon and the Commission's own Scientific Data Hub. The researchers used Google in this particular case. From the search results, we choose scientific data. To be able to access any product, the researchers have to feed in their login credentials. We are presented with a base map which serves as a guide for selecting the area of interest. So we zoom in to Ghana and to the southern part where Accra is the main urban area. We select the selection tool and draw an extent to define our area of interest. Now in the search criteria, we feed in our mission type, which is the Sentinel-2 multispectral instrument. For our sensing period, we are interested in any products within the period December 2015 to date. 62 products meet our search criteria and we scroll down the list to identify cloud-free imagery, if it's available. This image seems to be fine, so we view its product details. Our project area is somewhere here, so the size of the image is quite suitable. The size of the image is 5.19 gigabytes, and the image acquisition date is the 11th of December 2015. So we click on the download button, and our downloaded begins. The download file is zipped and its contents can be extracted using the 7-zip utility program for extracting compressed files or we could use any other file archiver utility application. In our extracted file we have the zipped folder which contains an XML file a thumbnail of the imagery and a granule folder 
The granule folder contains the subsets of the entire image seen. For each subset folder, there are 13 spectral bands of varying spatial resolution. We have the 10 meter bands, the 20 meter bands, and the 60 meter band in JP2 format. For our purposes, we are interested in only the 10 meter bands, which are bands 2, 3, 4, and 8. ESRI's GIS software, ArcGIS, is used to map the different levels of urban density. We will begin by adding our 10 meter spectral bands. A quick and efficient way of processing and analyzing satellite imagery is by using the image analysis window. To activate the image analysis window, click the Windows menu and select Image Analysis. The individual spectral bands are selected to produce a color composite image. The ordering of bands here is very important. Image composing can be done by using the composite bands tool, which outputs a temporary layer. So we have bands one, two, three, four. Band one here corresponds to band two, band two corresponds to band three, band three corresponds to band four, and band four corresponds to band eight which have been recorded. Note that although one, the bands have the same labels, the first is band two, the second is band three, then band four, and finally band eight. We will be using a false color composite, so our RGB combination will be displayed on the screen. In this false color, Composite, vegetation appears red, water appears as blue to dark blue, and built up areas as cyan. The extent polygon will be used to subset a portion of the image. We select the extent polygon, select the image to subset, then we use the clip tool to subset the image. By observing this imagery, we can identify where dwelling units are compact and areas where they are sparse. Issues of cloud cover are addressed by using cloud masks provided with the product. The masks mask out all cloud areas and replace the resulting gaps with much clearer image scenes. The different land cover classes in the imagery can be identified using an unsupervised classification technique. Where pixels exhibit similar spectral reflectances, they are grouped into similar spectral signatures, and they are grouped into the appropriate information class. We enable the image classification toolbar and set our clipped image as the active layer. We first group the pixels in the imagery into 30 spectral classes. Using the swipe tool, we can compare the results from our cl classification with our false color imagery. The 30 spectral classes are further regrouped into five information classes. These are high, medium and low density, vegetation, and water areas. This is achieved by using the reclassify tool, which is also called the recode tool in some software packages. Our input raster is ISO cluster 4, and our reclass field is value. Each one of the 30 spectral classes will be assigned an information class code ranging from 1 to 5. For example, number spectral class 1 belongs to water. Then in our reclass tool, we'll change that to 5. This process is repeated for the rest of the classes. We now have our five spectral classes. Again, this output can be compared against our false color imagery by using the swipe tool the accuracy of the classification can be addressed by ground truthing 
or by using higher resolution imagery. By observing the results, it can be seen that road networks and the airport runway have been misclassified as dwelling units. This being because they have exhibit the spectral signature similar to that of dwelling units. We can address this by masking out all other impervious surfaces which are not dwellings. Accessing and processing Copernicus data and manipulating it in a GIS package requires an understanding of the data and tools which are available and the procedures needed to transform raw data into a useful product. I hope that this video has provided some insights in this regard. However, the processing outlined in this video is really only the first step in what is quite a long process aimed at promoting sustainable, social, economic and environmental de development. Taking this first step is of course of vital importance and the free and open data provided by Copernicus represents a significant enabler in both developing and uh, using um, this data. Finally, Urogi would like to thank Sergius for providing the case study and we hope that you, the watcher, have appreciated this case study. Thank you very much.